Hi, last timers. This is Hedy again. Today I'm gonna continue reading uh, from the book of Reincarnation Biology of uh, Doctor Psychiatrist Anne Stevenson. So the previous uh, the previous videos was uh, from uh, unverified birthmarks corresponding to wounds. Same uh, same uh, part part two uh, chapter six. And now I'm gonna go back, uh, j jump in uh, to uh, chapter six, verification of wounds by medical records. And today will be the case of Delal Bayes from Turkey. The summary of the case and its investigation. Della Bias was born in uh, Samandak, Turkey in July 1970. Her parents were Ali Bayez and his wife Fatma. Ali Bayez was a cultivator and his wife were uh, Alivis or Alivis, uh, some sect, uh, Muslim sect in Turkey. And Arabic, uh, and Arabic were, was their mother tongue. Dalal was the third daughter and seventh child among eight children that her parents had had up to time the case developed. Fatma Bias uh, had a dream when she was pregnant with Dalal, but her testimony concerning it var varied on two different occasions. I shall, I shall describe what she said about it later. More, si 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 more significantly, Dalal was found soon after her birth have a pro prominent birth mark at the back of her head's figure 6-29 picture right here. Let's see if I can show it here. Hey. Uh, this figure, uh, this is a remark about it here and, and <laughs> underneath the picture. The birthmark at the top of Della's Bayes head as it appeared in September 1975 when she was five years old. The birthmark was approximately around hairless area somewhat resembling the scar of a wound. It was a little less than one centimeter in diameter. Della began to speak clearly when she was between the age one, between the eight ages of one and two. As soon as she could speak, she began referring to a previous life, and during the next year, she made a number of statements about it. She said that she was from Kavasli. She stated the name of the person whose life she was recalling and the names of her husband and several of her children. She described how she had been on a roof hanging a wash jacket to dry when she fell and landed on her head on a concrete floor. When Dalla was between two and three years old, she was demanding to be taken to Kavasli. Dalla's parents had no connection with Kavasli, and her mother later told me that at the time Dalal was asking to be taken there, she had no idea where, where it was. She added that she herself had never been, uh, ne uh, ne had never even been into Antakya, the large city of which Kavasi is a suburb. Accor accordingly, Fatma and Ali Bayez did nothing to verify Dalal's statements. It happened, however, that one day a man, Ali Mehmet, calls, calls uh, spelled like K-O-S-E, who lived in near Kavasli, came over to Samandak to visit a friend who was a neighbor of the Bayes family. From, his, uh, from this friend, Ali Mehmet calls, learned what Dalal was saying about how she had died in a previous life. 
and he also heard about her hurt birthmark. It occurred to him that Delas might be remembering the life of his aunt. Zahid calls. Zahid calls. That's her name in past life. Who had fallen through a hole in a roof, landed on her head, and died of the injuries she received. Zahid had lived at uh, Kavasli. At Kavasli, so what Dalal was saying seemed to match her life closely. Ali Mahmoud Kos told his uncle, Ali Hassan Kos, and Ali Hassan's Sahid's oldest daughter, Sabiha, about Dalal. This stimulated Sabiha and her husband, Hassan Mehmed Kos, to go to Samandak and visit Dalal. Dalal recognized Sabiha and answered correctly numerous questions about the life of Zahid that Sabiha put to her. After this initial meeting between the two families, further visits were exchanged between them. Dalal was taken to Kavasli and made further recognitions there and members of Sahid's family came to visit her at Samandak. Up to April 1975, Dalal had been three times to Kavasli and members of Zahid's closest family had visited her three times in Samandak. Reset Bayer, this guy was working with the doctor first learned of this case from an informant in Samandak when he was there investigating other cases in April 1975. At that time, he had a brief interview with Fatma Bayez, the last mother, in September 1975. He had a brief interview, okay, uh, pardon me. He, he and I continue to investig uh, the investigation of the case. We had further interview with Dela's mother, at which Dela's paternal grandmother was also present. We then interviewed three informants from Zahid's causes family. We also, at this time, obtained a copy of the extremely brief medical records of the admission admission of Zahid's cause to the government hospital at Antakya, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, some. What longer medical report from the inquest into Zahid's death? Reset Bayer and I did not meet Dalal or other informants for this case after 1975. However, in 1983, Dr. Ken Pollat or Pollat, at my request, had follow up interview with Dalal and also clarified some puzzling details. In 1991, an informant directed Dr. Jurgen Kale to this case, and he began a fresh investigation of it. He met and interviewed Delas and her mother at considerable length before Delas' brothers, Della brother, who was also present during Dr. Kale's interview, told him that I had investigated the case many years earlier. Dr. Kale did not meet any member of Zahid's family. These are the persons interviewed during the investigation. In Samandak, we interviewed Dalal Bayez, Fatma Bayez, Dalal's mother, Elif Bayez, Dalal's paternal grandmother. In Kavasli, Udabas, Uda, Udabasi, Antakya, we interviewed Ali Hassan Kos, Zahid's closest husband. Sabiha Kos, Zahid and Ali Hassan Kos' oldest daughter, Hassan Mehmed Kos, Sabiha Kos' husband, and Ali Mehmed Kos, Ali Hassan Kos' nephew. Dallas' father, Ali Bayez, was away from home at the time of uh, investigation of this case, and I did not interview him. The, the informants for this case spoke Turkish imperfectly and reset bare. And the reset bear had to obtain help at the time from Arabic speaking persons who were also com competent in Turkish. I believe that some of the disc this, uh, discrep discrepancies in the testimony 
which I shall mention later, arose from difficulty the, the, inf the infirmant and interpreters had in finding a correct word in Turkish for what they wished to describe. A relevant fact of geography and possibilities for normal means of communication between the two families. Samandag is a large town near, nearly at the southern border of the Turkish province of Hatay. Or Hatay. It is approximate, approximately 30 kilometers, kilometers south of Antakya, which is the capital and the second largest city in Hatay. Almost adjoining Adjoining Antakya on its uh, northern side is the largest village of Udabasi, Udabasi, and Kavasli. Is name given to the part to the part of the Udabasi that lies on the eastern side of the Antakya Iskan Iskanderun Highway. Fatma Bia said that the two families concerned concerned in this case had no knowledge of each other's existence before they met in connection with the, with the case. I find quite credible her denial that she did not know where Kavasli was and had never even visited Antakya before the case developed. The woman of the Arabic speaking Alevis in that part of Turkey, although, although not completely housebound, do not often travel away from communities where they live, unless sometimes to work elsewhere in picking cotton or other harvesting. Although, although I did not interview Fatma's husband, the last father, it is prob uh, it is probable that he would he would have gone into Antakya from time to time to, for major shopping, since it is a much larger city than than. Samanda. Zahid's husband, Ali Hassan Kos, was a small shopkeeper. He said that he had no customers or relations in Samandak and had never visited it before the case developed. His son-in-law Hassan Mehmet Kos and his nephew Ali Mehmet Kos similarly said that they had no relatives in Samandak. As we have seen, Ali Mehmed did not have a friend in Samanda, who lived near the Be Be Beyaz family. But Dalal was all already t uh, talking about the previous life at the time he went to visit this friend. He did not even meet Dalal until the time of her second visit to Kavasli. Although I, acquire, I inquired about knowledge of Dalal's family, on the part of Ali Hassan Kohl's and his son and nephew. I failed to ask them whether Zahid had any relatives in Samandak. In 1991, Dr. Kale learned from Fatma Bayez that Z Zahid had had some relatives in Samandak and Fatma had known them but had never met Zahid. As a he might be pronounced as he had. Okay, depends how he pronounce it. So, the two families concerned in this case lived approximately equal social and economic conditions. Judging by their houses, houses, I should think that Cole's family was somewhat more prosperous than the Bayes family. The physical distance between their communities given the means of the transportation in that part of the Turkey. More than other factors makes it unlikely that they had ever known each other before the case developed. The life and death of Zahid Kohl's. I learned almost nothing about Zahid's life before the, the fatal accident, the fatal accident that ended it. Ended it. She was born in 1914, the daughter of a man called Suleiman. When she grew up, she married Ali Hassan Kos and 11 children. And had 11 children, of whom nine survived in 1975. She, 
she she and her husband started married life in a village but they later moved in uh, moved to the center of Antakya and then to Kavasli they had been in newly built home house at Kavasli for only 10 days when Zahid fell through a hole in the roof when I was in Kavasli Adi Hassan Kos showed me that uh, the place where the accident had occur occurred the house had not been completely finished at the time he and his wife moved moved into it an outside stairway gave access to the roof which was a suitable place for hanging out laundry to dry a rather large hole and bean a rather large hole and being left in uh, in the roof and it was intended to build an interior stair staircase from the floor below to the roof which will be reached through this open hole by the time of my visit to my visit the the hole had been closed up but i could see where it had been and i estimated its dimensions as having been about three quarters of a meter wide and rather more than a, a meter long. It was certain, uh, cer certainly large enough for a person to fall through. At the time of Zahi's accident, the hole had been covered with a thin sheet of iron. This could have kept the, the rain from falling on the floor below, but it could have it could have borne no weight and might actually have made it difficult to remember that it covered a large hole but that as it may on june 6 1970 zahid was on the roof hanging up jacket she had washed when she fell through the hole in the roof probably she forget that the hole was behind her and stepped back in the iron sheet which yielded under her weight and let her fall through just how her body pitches as it fell down in a matter of con conjecture as she developed a large bruise about above her right eye that part of the head may have struck the edge of uh, the opening up in the concrete as she fell through the hole i estimated the distance between the roof on which Zahiz had been standing on the floor of concrete to which she fell up below as be between 3.5 and 4 meters. The doctor who examined her body later found a bruise on, on one loin and this part of the body may have touched the, uh, the concrete first, followed almost immediately by the collision of her head with the floor. Zahid's husband was not at home when accident occurred, but a boy saw it and quickly ran to fetch Zahid's daughter Sabiha. She came quickly and found her mother unconscious, unconscious and groaning. She nodded and wound. She nod, She nodded a wound above her right eye and another, another at the top of her head shortly thereafter Zahid's husband came to the scene of the accident and transported her was transported his wife to the government hospital in Antakya he later disqualified himself as a uh, first-hand witness of the injuries on his wife's body for this we can turn next to the records of the hospital of the in inquest into the accident. The records of Zahi's hospital admission, the hospital records were sketchy, but they included the following statement, which I have slightly rearranged re re to make them more coherent. They were dictated by a doctor the day after Zahi's death. The patient fell from a balcony. This is a statement of the doctor. The patient fell from a balcony. She could not speak. She was vomiting. The eyes were swollen, and there was uh, 
there was an ankymosis, ankymosis over the right eyebrow, cause of death. That's the cause of death. Cerebral hemorrhage or head injury. The report did not mention a wound at the top or back of the head. The medical report filed with the inquest conducted by the procurator's office contained the same information and little more. It mentioned. Mentioned the about five of them. The one first one, a large hematoma of the right eye. Second, a skin deep wound of the left eyebrow sewn with one satured and exchymotic area about the size of a fist in the right loin, abrasion of the skin of the right wrist, cause of death, cerebral hemorrhage, subsequent to injur injuries and uh, on the head. Okay. The case of the dead being so obvious, the pathologist saw no need to perf to perform a detailed autopsy. According to the hospital records, the heat cause died on June 7, 1970, the day after the accident and her admission to the hospital. She was about 56 years old. An announcing dream. In April 1975, Fatma Bias told Reset Bayer during his first pre preliminary interview with her that before Dalal was born she had dreamed she had dreamed that her baby had come from the village of Kavasli. However when she <coughs> reviewed this uh, this dream a few months later with the reset bear and me on September 28, 1975 she denied that the person appearing in the dream had said that she was from Kabasti. After the with, uh, withdrawing of this detail, nothing relevant to the case remained of the dream. Fatma Bia showed a strange reluctance to talk about the dream, almost as if she were ashamed of having had it. I thought that her husband might have clarified this matter, but he was not available. It's something happened about the information she had about the dream, you know. There's some kind of energy or entity who can, that they, they want to deviate the, the, the true information, you know. Same thing happened in the hospital. So the, her, her family, her husband, and everybody, they remember the scene of her death. And the hospital says something else. Anyway. Statements and uh, recognitions made by the lab. In table 6 9, here on the page, next page, I have listed first the statement I, items from 1 13 that Fatma Bayez said Dalal made, said Dalal made before the two families met. For several of these, I have listed. Sabiha calls as a uh, corroborator because she said that Delaz repeated them to her when the first went to Samandak to meet to meet her again. Fatma Bia's mother-in-law, Alif Bayez, was present throughout our long interview with Fatma on September 28, 1975. She did, she did not intervene during the interview, but when it was over, I asked her whether having listened to everything that Fatma had said, she wished to add or subtract anything. She said that she wished to do neither. And I took this mean that she agreed with what Fatma had said. I have not, however, I list, uh, listed her in the table as an additional informant because I do not know how well informed she was. On I item 14, the last recognition of Sabiha calls occurred when Sabiha first visited Delaz at Samandak. 
Iron 15 occurred at the time of Dele's first visit to Kavasli because it was introduced by a queuing question I regard it as almost worthless although Dele's shyness on seeing the heat's husband was certainly an inappropriate response towards someone whom she regarded as her husband. Item 16 also occurred at the time of Dele's first visit to Kavasli. I was told of the other recognitions that Deleuze had made in Kavasli. As reported by Adi Hassan Coase, some of these were stimulated by questions that gave cues, like the one that invited Deleuze to recognize him as Suleiman, for example, who is Mediha, about other recognitions, such as a person in a photographs whom Deleuze was said to have recognized. I learned insufficient details, I therefore have not included any other recognitions in the table. I learned of one person that I did not recognize, this was Ali Mehmed Kohls, the man of Zahid's family who had first learned about Dallas claims to be Zahid the reborn. He had met Dallas at the time of her second visit to Kavasli and said that she had not recognized him. Della em, uh, employed uh, pertinent expressions in, recog in recognizing Ali Hassan's cause when he came to Samanda to see her. She had already met him once in Kavasli, it shows in the item 15 table 6-9, so that so the fact of recognizing him in Samandak was not remarkable, but her manner of doing so per perhaps was when he went to see her, he brought her a dress and some jewelry. <laughs> After giving her this gift, he asked her to he asked her who had brought them to, to her. She replied, Abu Suleiman. The Arabic word for Abu means father of father of Suleiman. And when attached to the name of the man's older son, he commonly becomes the name by which the man becomes known after the birth of this son. Zahid and Ali Hassan Kosa's oldest son was Suleiman, and thus, and thus her use of expression was correct, even though not specific, given her conviction, conviction that she was Zahid's cause. Ali Hassan's close wife and Suleiman's mother. Some confusion occur occurred in statements about the place from uh, which Zahid had fallen. Fatma Beyaz used uh, the Turkish word balkon, balkon, balcony, in telling Reset Bayer in April 1975 what Delal had said about the way, about the way she had died in the previous life. Ali Hassan's cause said that Dela had said that she had fallen from a roof of the house at Kavasli when she showed fear upon being taken there at the age of uh, about two, at the age of about two years. I described her reaction at that time later. In September 1975, Dela herself used the word roof in going over detail which reset Bayer and me but by then she had visited the house at Kavasli and could have learned normally that Zahid had fall, fallen from a roof. The word balcony also got into notes made by the doctor who examined Zahid at the government hospital in Antakya. It is possible, although I have not confirmed this, that the Arabic speaking in informants of the case were unable to distinguish verbally an open roof and a balcony. In September 1975, Reset Bayer engaged Deleuze, Deleuze in a short conversation about her memories of the previous life. She repeated some of the essential details of how Zahid had died and gave several names of members of Zahid's family 
this review showed that at least some of her memories were persisting up to her age at that time, about five years old. The last behavior related to the previous life. Circumstances and the manner of detail speaking about the previous life, according to Patma Bear, Dalel began to refer to this to the previous life as, as soon as she could speak. She said the name Nahla and seemed to be addressing someone with that name. She talked to her to herself and was heard to say Nahla go and tell Sabiha that her mother has died. Quote, end quote. As she said this, she tried to scoopy a hole, to scoop a hole in the earth. When Fatma Bey has heard Dala speaking in this way, she asked her how she had died in the presumed previous life, and Dala told her how she had fallen down while hanging up, hanging up a jacket to be dried. I did not learn of later circumstances associated with Della speaking about the previous life. Between the age of two and three, she was asking to be taken to Kavasli where she wanted to see her daughter. Della's expression of emotion on meeting members of Zahid's family. When Della met members of Zahid's family, she showed strong emotions. When Sabih Hakos first came over to Samandag to meet Dalal. She, Dalal, cried so much that she could not eat some cake that Sabiha had brought her. Sabiha also cried at this <laughs> at this first meeting. When Dalal met uh, Zahid's children at Kavasli, she hugged them. Delal's fears. Fears. When I asked Fatma Bayes whether Delal had any an, uh, unusual fears, she at first replied in the negative. In response, uh, in response, uh, then to leading questions about fear of of heights, she said that Delal did not sh uh, show fear when she went up on a, on the roof. The roofs of many houses in that part of Turkey are flat and have no guard rail at, at their edges. When the letter was first taken to Kavasli, she had told her she had told her parents that she wished to go to the house of Zahid's daughter Sabiha, and she went there first. Afterward, she was brought to uh, Zahid's house where Ali Hassan Kos was still living. Here she was reluctant to go into the house and cried. She said that she had fallen from its roof and died. The article, uh, the attitude of, of the adults concerned toward the last memories. The, the adults of both families to, uh, seems to have encouraged Della to speak about the previous life when she wished to do so. However, her family made no effort to verify her statements about a previous life, and they only learned of their accuracy. Through the chance, through the chance visit of a member of a cozy family of Kabasli to their neighbors. Later she, later the case received no publicity and Reset Bayer would never have heard about, about it if he had not been in Samandak for the investigation of the other cases. Delal's birthmark in the figure 629, one I showed you guys uh, earlier. Shows Della's birthmarks in September 1975 when she was a little over five years old. The birthmark was a round hairless area, almost in the center of the top of the, her head. It was a little less than I uh, than one cent, cent, centimeter, centimeter. 
in diameter and appearance it resembled the scar of a healed a healed wound it was red when Dallas was born but was not bleeding or oozing no one else in the family had a similar birthmark in uh, infancy and early childhood Dallas sometimes acted as if she, if she felt if she felt discomfort or pain at the sight of the birthmark. Her mother noted that when when she was placed on her back so that the birthmark would be against the bed, she turned her, herself on her side. She would sometimes complain of pain in her head and in the, her throat. throat. At the time of our interview, September 1975, when Dalal was asked how she had died, she pointed towards her throat. This may, however, have been a poorly aimed indication of her head. Her general health was then good. Comments. Comments. Although Sabi Hako said that she had not noticed, noticed a wound on the top of her mother's head, she, uh, the medical record that I examined did not mention a wound there. It seems almost certain that the, the doctor examining the injuries that he would have looked at the head with a view to learning how she had become unconscious. Both medical reports attributed her head, her dead to head injuries. However, the injury to the brain was the in, important lesion for from the perspective of the doctors and they might have felt no need to record an abrasion on the scalp. Comments on the evidence of uh, paranormal processes in the case. None of the, none of the persons concerned in this case seems to have had any reason either, either to su uh, suppress it or to ex ex exaggerate, exaggerate it. It involved to murder or scandal, and there were no gulfs of wealth or castle of the kind that sometimes separate the concerned families in the cases of India. I have uh, seldom investigated a case less complicated than this one with regard uh, to possible motives for distorting, distorting the testimony in it. The, and then the inadequated villages of South villagers of South Central Turkey have uh, notoriously unreliable memories for dates. Still, there is no reason to think that Della's mothers would have been more than a month off in her statement that Della's was born in July 1970. We, uh, we can be certain from the medical record that Zahid died on June 7, 1970. This means that Delel was born within a few weeks, perhaps even within a few days, of Zahid's death. If we decide that reincarnation is the best interpre interpretation of, this, of the case, we should have to suppose that the injury of Zahid's head somehow affected Della's uh, fetal body not long before her birth. A short interval between the previous personality's death and the subject's birth has occurred in other cases of which I have, which I give a list in the table 14 2. Della's later development. In May 1983, uh, Dr. Polat met. Dalal in Samandak for a show up interview with her. She was then almost 13 years old. She had completed pre primary school and was staying at home and employed. Dalal said that her memories of the previous life had not faded. However, she had not spoke, spoken about them spontaneously for many years. Since the case of, since, since the age of three, she she thought she sometimes spoke about the previous life when she met members of Zahid's closest family, or when other persons asked her a question about it. She still remembered in particular the pain in Zahid's throat 
when she fell from the roof. Della said that she no longer had the fears, the fears she had felt and shown when younger. She continued to exchange visits with the Coles family there rather than she there rather than she initiated such a visit, but she apparently welcomed them as much as they. A visit between the families had occurred four months before Dr. Pollock's interview. Although in most cases visits between the two families concerned at I uh, attenuate and uh, usually cease after a few years. This did not happen in Della's case. Dr. Kell learned in 1991 that Della, who was born, who was born 20 years old, who was who was then 20 years old, was still visiting Zahid's family about twice a year. Early in 1991, Della had attended the wedding of uh, Zahid Stars, Samir. Samir, the daughter. At this time, Della was calling herself Zahid, but Dr. Kale did not learn when she had begun to do this. No informant had told me that Della had asked to be called Zahid when she was a young child. Comments. The encouragement of the Della's exp uh, expression of her memories by both families concerned and the continuing visit between them had probably tended to keep Della's memories fresh. However, it is, it is also possible that she had lost the original imaged memories of the previous life. <coughs> Excuse me. Or some of them or some of them and they replaced this with the memories both of what others had said she had e early said and normally and of uh, normally acquired information it is exceeding difficult to distinguish the different the different sources of apparent memories in a child of Della's age at the time dr Pollock met her Mer Met her Stevenson, nineteen seventy four, and here's uh, finish the case of Delad. I will go later on later another day for another case. I'm not gonna read all the book. I'm just gonna choose a few few cases. It's a long book. Thank you for whoever listening uh, now. In Arab, I'm gonna do translation Arabic later today. Thank you for listening and have a good one. Bye-bye.